can not be able to reduce. Okay? So let's go to the last example. So this means that as per this theorem, we are not confined only to those, the minimum uh, dimensional space, like if it was an R4 problem and we have the two independent vectors. So through this theorem, we can say that at least our uh, living dimension is not R2. We can go, we can cover higher than That's that. Right. Yes. How high we can cover, that is not sure. Uh, how high? I mean, I don't like to go through the, this is in the geometric control course. You mean to keep doing D brackets until you get... That's, that, that's what I'm saying, effect. that we can go keep on going higher and search yes. for the independent direction. Yes. Any question? So indeed you will have a question in your homework and in your final about the integrability of some constraints. Given constraint, whether you gonna form the constraint yourself, form the constraint equation, and you apply it or I give you the constraint directly, but for sure there gonna be problems with that. <coughs> yes? Um, I'm not sure how do we define x1 and x2. I mean, why, yeah, this is why are question. we interested in the span of x1 and x2? Very good. This is a very good question. But first of all, do you agree with this equation or not? Because this is the... Yeah, I understand the equation. This one? Yeah. Okay. Because what, what, what does this equation look like? Let me see. d by dt for all my coordinates configuration, q's. d by d for the q's are what? These are all the velocities, right? So the left hand side represents all the velocity vectors that I will have. Okay? The right hand side is what I'm, I'm, I'm saying that, I'm telling you that all your velocity vectors will be simply some linear combination of these two vectors, x1 and x2. So this, to these two vectors are the only allowed velocity vectors. Okay? Now I'm asking myself the question. I have two allowed velocity vectors on a four-dimensional space. Do they cover just two-dimensional space, or do they really cover the four-dimensional space? So it turns out, at the end of the day, to an integrability of x1 and x2. So you just collect them in a distribution and reform the question in terms of the integrability of the distribution, because we have an answer for that. We have a distribution you want to ask, is it integrable or not? We have Frobenius that tells us. Any question? Last example. A robot kind of thing. So, uh, Average body that is allowed to rotate in its place, it's not translating, or I don't care about the translation for the moment. So it has a moment of inertia i. So this is a degree of freedom. It allows, we are allowed to rotate. So, uh, and this rigid body we have, it's like spacecraft or something. And we have here an arm, a robotic arm, of mass m and length l. And the length l is extended. So uh, it can vary with time. I can just extend it and retract it. OK? And of course, I can rotate the arm as well. So this is a second degree of freedom epsilon. OK? So how many degrees of freedom in total? Three. Three. So your configuration manifold is every L epsilon theta lives in L is a real number, maybe <coughs> plus because it's positive only, a length. Cross S1 circle for epsilon circle for theta. Okay? Your configuration manifold. I mean for solving the problem it doesn't matter much to identify Q space, but it's good. Any question about that so far? About three degrees of freedom. Any question about the problem description? A body that's allowed only to rotate in place. And on that body, I attach a robotic arm that extends up and down and rotate. Okay? 
So uh, what's your kinetic energy? It's only rotations, only rotation for rigid bodies, two rigid bodies. One of moment of inertia I, the other guy I know it's moment of inertia. So one half I omega squared for the first body, the black body, it's just it's omega theta dot squared. The red body, it's one half, it's moment of inertia about this guy, since it rotates about this point. It's 1 over 3 ml squared times its angular velocity squared. Its angular velocity is the 2 together. Okay? And let's say that V is 0, the potential energy is 0, so this turns out to be our M. Okay? You can see here the partial L, partial theta is zero. Right? Partial L, partial theta is zero. So, uh, anybody remembers? What the momentum is conserved. So, because the right hand side in the theta equation is also zero. No, we get what? What do we get here? Corresponding momentum. Is here. Corresponding momentum. Anybody remembers what is the expression for the corresponding momentum? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Partial L, partial what? Theta. Theta dot. This is constant, right? The angular momentum of theta is, is the angular momentum corresponding to theta. It's conserved. So let's do the partial L, partial theta is conserved, theta dot. And equal to constant, so this is I theta dot plus here one third ML squared psi dot plus theta dot. This is equal to constant, in particular equals to its initial value. If you start from rest, from rest everything is zero, so this will be zero. Any questions so far? Yes, Mohammed? Is L changing as well? L is changing. Don't we need to take a translational kinetic energy for that? No. Okay. If you need to take the, I mean, you try. Take the, the translational kinetic energy at the center of mass. Well, uh, maybe, let's see. If you take the translational kinetic energy, this will be L cosine and L sine. Maybe, yes, you can, you can add it here, but it will not affect anything here. Okay. So, any questions so far? Uh, why is that constant zero again? Because you get it from the initial condition, and if we start at rest, Theta dot zero, psi dot zero. Okay. What do you think about this equation? What do you think it looks like? Doesn't it look like a velocity constraint? It's a constraint of velocity, right? If you, if I, for my R, for my robotic R, at certain length, if I attain some psi dot, then theta dot is not free anymore. Right? Theta dot is dictated by this equation. So sometimes the conservation of momentum give you constraint-like relations on velocities, on velocities, because the momentum is always linear in velocity. So to me, this is looks like a velocity constraint, Fafian constraint. And the question is. Can you integrate this guy to get rid of one of the degrees of freedom? Okay? Because this is this is now is practical. I am I have the ability to extend L dot up and down and to rotate my R. But look at I mean imagine this, you are here from rest, you start everything from rest. The body is at rest. And you just start with your arm, you can rotate your arm and extend it up and down. Just by extending up and down and rotating the arm, can you rotate the whole body? 
Yeah. Right? This is the question. Because indeed I can live, I can do whatever I like for L and Psi, this is my robotic arm. But the body is not directly actuated. Okay? And actually I'm relying on this conservation of momentum to actuate the body. And let's not just make things very deep. At the end of the day, here is a constraint that I want to check whether it's integrable or not, because the consequences are serious. What are the consequences? The consequence is that if it's integrable, it means that I will not be able to get any theta I like. It's only some thetas on the reduced dimensional surface. Or if it's not integrable, it means that using these two only actuations, I will be able to get any theta I like, starting from any arbitrary theta. Okay? So the repercussions or the consequences are very serious. And the analysis is very straightforward. <clears throat> from that constraint, please go and form d by dt for all your degrees of freedom. L, Epsi, and theta equal to, I only have two free, L dot and Epsi dot. You pick whatever two you like. But these are the natural ones, right? So L dot is one, L dot and zero here, Epsi dot is one, Epsi dot and zero there, and theta dot is indeed dictated from this equation. Let's get theta dot from here. Is negative 1 3 ml squared psi dot divided by i plus one third ml squared. So it's some function of L. Some function of L. Okay? So theta dot equals to some function of L psi dot and zero ml. Any question about that? What is the next step? Libras. What is the next step? Huh. Do the Libra. Right. Libra between what? Two vector fields. Yeah, and do it step by step, please. I'll define this as x1, and this is my x2. These are the two allowed velocity ve vectors. So I'm going to define my delta to be the span of these two vectors, and the integrability of this constraint. The integrability of this constraint now is equivalent to the, the integrability of this distribution. And the integrability of the distribution is killed by the Frobenius theorem. How do you do it? Well, I need to check if it's involute or not. So the knee bracket between x1 and x2, I need it. Which is partial x2, partial all your coordinates times x1 minus the other way around, but the other way around x1 is constant, so it's zero. Let's write it. Partial x1, partial little x times x2, but this guy is zero, because it's constant. So let's differentiate x2 with respect to all the coordinates. This is 0, this is 0, and this guy with respect to L is F prime, and no other dependencies. Times x1, which is 1, 0, 0, and here is what we get. We get F prime of L. Right? I'm doing something wrong? No? No, I, I feel like I'm doing something wrong. It's going to be on a <coughs> last row, I guess. Uh, maybe at the last row. Oh, oh, you're right. That's right. Zero, zero F prime. Yeah, that's correct. Okay. So this is the resulting vector. What do I need to check? What do I need to check here? Independent of the exactly. If this is x3 is in the span of x1 and x2 or not. Indeed, it's not. In particular, it's perpendicular to this guy. x3 is perpendicular to x1, so no contribution at all. And uh, x3 now is not is not 
in the planet of this guy. Right? Uh, so it's as if this covers the first direction, this covers the second, and this gives you the third. But we need to make sure that it's not zero. This thing is not zero. Indeed, the derivative with respect to LA is not zero. So x3 is not in the span of, it's not in delta. It's not in delta, which means what? Non involutive. Delta is not involutive, which means what? Not in non involutive. By Frobenius, it's a very celebrated. Theorem, because it's if and only if, it's very comfortable. It's not integrable, which means that this constraint is not integral. The constraint is not integral. What are the consequences? The consequences are I can reach any point in my configuration space using only these two allowed velocities. Correct? Any question? Similar problems like this will be found in homework 4 and the 5. So if you could only control the rotation of the arm, but you couldn't control the length, then does this not work anymore? If I only control the rotation of the arm and not, not the length? Yes. If the length was fixed, then you cannot go to any theta? Uh, from rest? Yes. No. Any question? We have a few minutes. We can discuss things. Any general things related to differential geometry? Yes, go on, please. Why do you need bracket on a part of the Let's see. The lead bracket is a mathematical operation. Yeah. And by definition, it's like the cross product. Why is defined for three two vectors? Not three. Well, you can do the cross product between the two and then with respect to the third. This is actually what we do in geometric control. You can say x1 with x2 and the result is with x3 and you keep doing it forever. Okay? So, but the, the mathematical operation itself is defined between two vector fields. 